Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about why I bought an Atari 2600 Plus in 2024. It seems a bit odd to go back and buy an Atari 2600. And yes, this is the modern, itera the modern iteration of this console. It is the one that's been released recently. Atari's back releasing consoles. And of course, this is a retro take on the console. This is a new version of the original. But when I open up the console and I have a look at it, it's made to look like the original. It's made to look and operate like the original. The cables on the back of it, I'm just going to grab it out here, if I can get it open. The actual cables on it are HDMI, and you get the original controller ports, meaning I can plug in stuff like the original controllers, and I've been told they will work. But having something that's available operates like the original, and you can buy the cartridges for and play the original cartridges on this, although it's given through emulation, it is very important to have something like this in 2024. And I grew up on the Atari. I'm one of the... I'm an Atari kid. I grew up on Atari. That was my first console. Before the PlayStation ever came out, before the Sega ever came out, Atari was a juggernaut in the industry. And a lot of their games and stuff were out there in the world. And you could easily track down all the Atari games. Still to this day, I've seen a collector market for Atari games that are boxed and pristine, but your typical Atari games, they're not like NES games where they're hugely overvalued. They're more, hey, the Atari games, you want Dig Dug, you can probably get it for about 10 bucks. But also the whole vibe of buying a cartridge, I mean, this one came with a few games in it. So this has Adventure, Combat, Dodgem, Haunted House, Maze Craze, Missile Command. Missile Command was Activision, wasn't it? Uh, Real Sports Volleyball, Surround, Video Pinball, and Yars Revenge. They gave us Yars Revenge, a 10 in 1 cartridge. But look at that, you get like little notches. Remember the little notches you would program and you could um, essentially make all that up? I just need to do this on camera one second. I'm going to have to take the console back out real quickly. All right. Let's just see what this feels like. No, don't want to force it. Be very gentle with it. Ah, oh, that feels so good to put a cartridge on that. But you see what I mean? Like, this is an old school vibe. And yes, I, the best part of this console is that it can play the original cartridges. If I went out and bought Atari 2600 games from back in the day, they should, in theory, work on this console. And it's amazing that we got a new... <laughs> Atari basically listened to the fandom and said, hey, let's uh, let's get these games back out there. Let's bring Atari back, but do it, do it different. We don't want to compete with... We don't want to compete with Sony. We don't want to compete with Xbox. You don't want to compete with Nintendo. You want to have the whole feel of Atari be that you can go back and play the older versions. And I love that it comes with the controller. I'm just going to pull that real quick. Give me two seconds. I'm going to be gentle with the box because I like maintaining the box. There we go. Man, look at this. This is amazing. And it's got that old, like, what is it? Nine pin connector. I don't know the exact name for it. But I mean, the joystick feels a bit stiff compared to the old one. But I mean, it's an Atari. And I think it's amazing that an Atari can still be bought in 2024. And given it's the new stock, but like, I know they've got that new game out, uh, Mr. Run and Jump, I think it's called. Run and something. I think it's Mr. Run and Jump. But, you know, there's, there's that new game that they've made. And if Atari just keeps going down that path, putting out physical cartridges and saying, you know what? We're not going to focus on going digital. The whole point of this console is to be physical. And digital, yeah, digital works for other things if you want to have emulation. But this is trying to be very much a, um, well, I've got number 40,000. This is in the 40,000 range. So yeah, there's only 40,000 so far of these. At least this is the version I have in the 40,000 and something range. But yeah, you've even got the levers on that. It reminds me so much of the old. Now, given I grew up on the Atari 2600 Junior, so it was a bit different to this one. It had certain colors on it, a bit of silver and stuff. And it was very much a green packet. But games like Dig Dug, games like Space Invaders, games like Pac-Man, games like Frogger, they were big 
big deals back in the day, especially when your gaming experience was first seen on this. Now, obviously, moving forward to the PlayStation, the Sega, Nintendo, all these other game systems, you've seen leaps and bounds that can't be discounted and overridden. You've seen what comes after it. But going back and being humble to the original, you have to understand, like, without this, without Atari 2600, you would not have the big games of today. I mean, this opened up the door for Nintendo NES system, and obviously the first games on that Nintendo did for a home console, I believe, were on this. I mean, I think Mario Brothers and also Donkey Kong were on this, and you have to fact check me on that. I mean, for the home console market, I think that was their first licensing deal before they ever did the NES. But this is amazing. And while I'm not going to set it up yet until I have the games I want, because there's nothing really to play on it other than the one cartridge, I want to experience them all at one time. So it's going to be a special experience. But the whole thing about Atari is that I am sentimental about it because I grew up on it. I grew up poor and I didn't necessarily have access to many of the new upgrades like the NES and that. Atari 2600 was my console. And it was, it was my sister's console, let's get that right. But I loved the system. I loved things like this. I loved the Game Boy. I loved simple gaming. And we've lost track of simple gaming as we went forward. As we've got more technology bound and more into everything's got to be high bit rates, everything's got to be 4K, everything's got to be 60 frames per second, we forget that humble games like Atari are just as good if you appreciate what they are. So that's my reasoning behind buying an Atari in 2024. And yeah, I'm so excited to check out this system. Obviously I'm waiting until I get some more games that will be coming. And yeah, this is gonna be a really interesting console to play. And I will do a review, a proper full on review about it when I actually do get it set up and get some more games. So let me know what you think. And yeah, are you planning on going out buying an Atari in 2024 or even 2025? Is this a console you're actively looking at? It's going to be amazing to check out. I mean, obviously, as I said, the cartridges, this whole idea of going back to physical cartridges, given Nintendo have the small cards that they put in the Switch. But I mean, like full on, you know, this is a big juggernaut of a case. Like, you don't get experiences like this anymore. Let me know if that's something that you're eventually looking at, like, hey, going back is not necessarily a bad thing. We've seen the retro market go towards Nintendo 64, towards NES, even towards stuff like, I've seen uh, GameCube games starting to get more collectible. Game Boy has been collected for a long time. But Atari is starting to get this more retro vibe, and it's always been retro, but it's starting to get more collectors of appreciating what it actually was at the time. And you have to understand, this is not... It's not Nintendo. It had Nintendo games on it. It had Activision games. Like Activision, Activision really started by putting stuff on the Atari. And that was the big lawsuit back in the day when Atari tried to control the video game market. They, Activision, they being Activision, were the first company to say, hey, no, we're going to put our own games on this and we're going to challenge you in court to make it the case. And the court sided with Activision. That's how you got Activision games on the Atari and third party studios. But this is amazing. I think this is the way to go. I think, yes, while I don't think this is gonna make a return anytime soon, I could see Atari being like the vinyl of gaming. Like, yeah, okay, you got your, you got your Nintendo, you got your PlayStation, you got your Xbox, which are like the mainstream, like the streaming services and the CDs and all the better qualities that came after. And then you have this, which is like humble vinyl, you know? Big old cartridges to remember like, hey, you you physically own a cartridge. You can hold it and like, it's something. you got 10 games on that. I think this is amazing. And I just wanted to make a quick video. I showed it off in my last video, which was about the PlayStation network crashing. And I wanted to do a longer form video because this is awesome. And I, I don't care what anyone says. This was worth what I paid for it. It was 179, but I got it through a discount. So I got it for about 160. 160 for an Atari console. I mean, come on. Yes, it's not the 100% original. And yes, there's going to be a boot screen, a load screen there. When you pop in a cartridge, you're going to get the Atari logo. That was not on the original. When you used to switch on the original, it would load instantly because it was loading directly. Whereas obviously this is loading for emulation. So it's got to take that half a second. Maybe, I don't know, what is it? 10 to 15 seconds from what I've heard. I don't mind because that is worth it to me because I'm playing it on a HDMI TV. I'm, I'm essentially experiencing it like I was a kid again. <laughs> 
but yeah, I love how this thing looks. I love that I bought an Atari and I have a Atari now in my in my uh, collection again. I s threw my Atari away a long time ago and the games I sold off, but it's just amazing to have an Atari back in my collection and in any iteration. Like, this is something that I can put an actual cartridge in. Like, that is just freaking awesome to me. There we go. See how cool that looks? Yeah, let me know what you guys think, and you can tell I'm fanboying over this, but <laughs> yeah. Atari 2600, back on the market, 2024.